Missouri. Fallout continues from Texas's new six-week heartbeat bill, which effectively eliminates access to abortion in the state. The bill empowers vigilantes to enforce the measure, a risky move since it encourages the Republican base to pay attention to people other than themselves. Here's Governor Greg Abbott assuring Texans that only the vast majority of unwanted pregnancies will be forced to term. Governor, regarding the heartbeat bill, why force a rape or incest victim to carry a pregnancy to term? Uh, it doesn't require that at all because uh, obviously uh, it provides uh, at least six weeks uh, for a person uh, to be able to uh, get an abortion. And so for one, it doesn't provide that. That said, however, let's make something very clear. Rape is a crime and Texas will work tirelessly to make sure that we eliminate all rapists from the streets of Texas by aggressively going out and uh, arresting them and prosecuting them and getting them off the streets. A fiery defense from Greg Abbott, who would not allow the details of the law to go ignored, like Texas's 76% of rapes that go unsolved. Now, Cecile, obviously this law will only affect people who cannot afford to travel to another state for an abortion. Do we need to go out of our way to help these few dozen people? Governor Abbott, you know, he's been governor for a long time. And yes, something like 75% of rapes aren't even ever prosecuted. So his, his understanding of women's health and women's rights is abysmal. About 85 or 90% of abortions, uh, safe and legal abortions that take place in the state, uh, take place uh, after six weeks. So he's wrong on all counts. Well, the good news about this law is that six weeks pregnant really means being only two weeks late for your period, and you'll have to wait a good three weeks for an appointment at a clinic, which gives you plenty of time to invent a time machine and get a safe legal abortion. Cecile, I had a question. How can Democrats fight this on a national level without having to resort to dumb bullshit like legislation or executive action? Well, unfortunately, I mean, we are going to have to resort to uh, legislation Aww. and definitely congressional legislation legislation because this isn't just happening in Texas. You know, people in Texas just lost a right they have had for nearly 50 years. It's the first state in the country that has outlawed abortion since the Roe versus Wade decision. But as you may have noticed in the news, there are governors across the country that are ready to do the same thing. The last thing Democrats should be doing is passing any legislation. They should do the right thing and wait 40 years until the next Supreme Court justice dies. I think the problem here is a lack of education. So I'll do my part by explaining the female anatomy in clinical detail. Women have at least two ovaries. That's where the eggs stay refrigerated until it's time to make a baby. From there, the egg is rocketed at the speed of light through the dystopian tube, which connects to the uterus where the egg hatches, and the cell-sized baby burrows into the uterine lining, where it will hold on for dear life for the next nine months. Now, at some point during those nine months, the baby gets absolutely glazed with sperm from a daddy penis. Daddy, you, yes, you didn't have to say right anything. To Good God. Okay. Well, Cecile, tell them I got it right. It's really frightening. You sound like frankly, some members of the Texas legislature. Um, and this is what's really bottom line, the scariest is that we have folks passing laws who are never going to get pregnant and never have to deal with um, the issue of an unintended pregnancy or medical complication. That's true in the Texas legislature, and it's true in the United States Congress. You heard her, it's true. Now, moving on. Our nation's ongoing teacher dehumanization campaign has shifted from its union crushing and human shield deputizing phase to the natural next step, wholesale mass murdering, as COVID deaths among teachers are on the rise. In Miami-Dade County, Florida, at least 13 are dead so far. More than many students can count because no one's left to run math. The news comes after Florida's Republican Governor Ron DeSantis finished shoving as many residents as possible behind him at a press conference to convince the media his state still has people and said this. The data is showing us you're much less likely to be hospitalized or die if you're vaccinated. However, the vaccinations have not created herd immunity. And so if the idea is that having uh, herd immunity, you force everyone to do this, and that will create herd immunity. That has not happened. He's right. The vaccinations he won't mandate aren't doing the thing he's sabotaged. Cecile, are we doing enough to make sure the people we entrust to educate our children feel properly aware of their disposability? Or should we make them walk around on all fours like animals? <laughs> it's so frightening. I'm, you know, my son actually teaches high school chemistry, which if you want to talk about like a tough job, I just am so grateful that he does not teach it in a state that's governed by Ron DeSantis. It is so sad and uh, really so alarming that a state like Florida, where I believe now there are, have been 3 million 
cases of COVID confirmed that you have a governor who is still trying to put his own politics ahead of the well-being of our teachers and our kids. Well, it is good that these kids are learning they should avoid a teaching career and become entrepreneurs. You can make millions designing the world's first multi-level COVID cemetery. There's got to be a way to monetize off of all this tragedy. Uh, let's get my financial advisor on the line. Hello, Teddy? Uh, hi, yes, this is Teddy. Hi, Teddy, how are you? My name is I'm one of the uh, advisors here. I'm How's it going? It's going great. Uh, listen, I've got everyone here, Rich, Sarah, Eleanor, Cecile Richards. We're looking at these COVID variants and, you know, this is not going away. Are there any misery index funds we can buy into, like a custom investment product that enables us to profit off of betting against humanity, something like that? Mm, I mean, the platform has obviously a lot of, uh, you know, products, you know, different strategies, etc. Okay. Um, so I'd have to kind of figure out what you're looking for more specifically. I'll just run a couple of things by you. Are there any startups with a fancy video conference platform for like a remote funeral kind of thing? Remote funeral. I mean, that's, I'd have to look into that, but... Okay, um, all right. Is there a high-yield investment in that feeling of doom that's forever sitting in your chest? Something like that? Um, off the top of my head, um, I don't know, to be honest with you. Okay. But I could definitely take a look. Uh, I'll reach out to one of my specialists that's more familiar with the platform and see, you know, what he thinks. Okay. Can we make money capturing the carbon from funeral car processions? Uh, it's very specific. I don't know. That, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree. Yeah, that's, no, that's a very niche kind of <laughs> industry. Uh, what about the deep darkness that... It comes to you when you think about all the little kisses you won't get from your new grandson. Will he ever really know you? Will he know a world without this virus? Can we monetize that somehow? I'm just spitballing here. Um, I... These are all great questions, to be honest with you, Teddy. I do not know the answers to that. That's fair. You know, if some new COVID turns your corpse into a crazy shape, you know, we want to be the next board members of whatever company makes wacky coffins. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, all right. Tell Jack I said, hey, promise me. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, I'll see you at the head of the Charles. Okay, take care. Okay, great. Be well. Now, here's a story that doesn't really affect anyone, but I guess we'll talk about it anyway. Our government finally fixed the one single thing it was doing wrong, giving free money out to unemployed people. I thought Washington's fastest hallway clearer, Senator Ted Cruz, came up with a workable solution. He tweeted, um, get a job? There are millions of vacancies and small businesses across the nation are desperate for workers. Exactly. Maybe you should have thought of that before you got pregnant and had to drop out of high school because you couldn't get an abortion. Now, Cecile, a According to payroll data, states who ended benefits saw 2.2% growth in hourly shifts, and states who kept federal aid grew 4.1%. But isn't growing the shaming of poor people more important than growing the economy? It is kind of ironic that Senator Ted Cruz, I'm from Texas, and that he would be making fun of people uh, who are not getting jobs. I mean, he's been living off the public uh, payroll for a long, long time. And I think what people in this country need are good paying jobs that have security. And we know millions of women lost their jobs during the pandemic. And it wasn't only because their, their place of employment shut down. It's because the lack of childcare, affordable childcare, public schools being an uneven, uneven in terms of being open. There are a lot of reasons that people are struggling to get back I'm back to work. Well, I just got to say to folks struggling out there, if you miss unemployment payments so much, just set up weekly allowances for yourself from your bank account. It's literally the same. And I hear people saying there's no food, but on my drive into work, I see a deer and I'm thinking, picky much? Have we thought about simply building the Wendy's around the unemployed person's home? Now here's an idea. Could we pay people to stand in the shape of the Dow Jones market graphs on CNBC? Ooh. I love that, but I I don't want to see them. Let's cover them with bars. Oh, I love that. that is nice. Very wow. nice.